What's up and welcome to another MoGraph MoCast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And joining us today is Camp MoGraph Head of Staff, Casey Hupke. Hello! And MoGraph is a supplement to our site, MoGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects, plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor... Or working for the man, you can email us info at mograph.com. Let us know what you think about the show, questions, comments, concerns, queries, grievances, artists, suggestions, show topic ideas. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and mograph.com. I don't have the TikTok going today. The reason is it's a short show. <laughs> right. It's an early it's morning show. show. No, but we really mean it. It's a short show. This We it mean is. it. No, no, believe me, for reals. It's and, a short show. Yeah, TikTok's known for its v- very long format content. Right, right? that's why you're taking <laughs> yeah, yeah. this off of there. Like, it, yeah. it's most. I don't really use TikTok, but I understand it's mainly for watching like three to four hour long, episodes yes. of Planet Earth. Yeah, L- long yeah, documentaries that, and stuff. Yeah. Sure. it's for those with really long attention spans. <laughs> that's what I thought. Because yeah. TikTok, the time is just keeps passing as you're right. watching. Yeah, it right, makes right, sense. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. But here's the thing: it's going to be uh, a short show for so for that reason, I will be on TikTok doing some some Cinema 4D stuff later today. Yeah, for something I'm working on, so you can hit us up there. Uh, Casey had something uh, come up schedule wise at the last second, so that's why we're like super early today and super sh- super short. We're going for an hour, an hour from now, so we need to get into it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, number one. This week, a uh, couple things I wanted to mention. Number one is that uh, Winbush has a TikTok now. Speaking of TikTok, oh, he does. Yeah, uh-huh. so I'll link two to gags. that. Two gags. Two gags. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, um, he's like, well, I guess I should get into this. So he sent me a, a text yesterday and said, I, I finally did it, and he put something up there. Is it Winbush here? Is yes, that his name? it's Winbush nice. here. All right, yeah. follow. I like that. Yeah, he's got so eight he, followers so, so far. Nice. Be one of the first, first. Ready? Hit him up. 10%. My wife started TikTok like two weeks ago, and she's almost at five hundred followers or something like that. Really? Nice. That's All good. right. That's good. I, I, Winbush needs to get a thousand so we can do live streams together. Yeah. yeah. She's cooking. <clears throat> oh, yeah, making, making food. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's nice. See, I, yeah. I, I really want to start posting more stuff. So like I love the podcast and I also hate the podcast in a way because the <laughs> podcast has made me extremely self-conscious, you know, oh. because of all the hate that we have gotten at times, you know, like, and so gotten that much. Hate, eh, I don't know. Honest. Like I, I take it's it very I take amplified it very personally when someone those does two not like times, something. Right. Those two really bad times. Yeah. Like are two people, but two like times out of, you know, it, 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 I don't know. It makes me it makes me really <laughs> self conscious about like posting mm-hmm. things, you know. But it's like, <laughs> I, what? what? <laughs> Casey said, "Why do you keep having me back?" <laughs> um, I don't know. I just want to. I, I wanted. I want to do more content for TikTok and stuff. I want to do. You be you. Like, you be yeah. you, Matt. You be I, you, bro. So, so one right. of the things that like. So mm-hmm. I, I I joined TikTok. I haven't posted anything. I generally just don't put stuff out there anymore just because of the same thing. I just don't like engaging with people or right. like, or, or like, I don't like, like being like, Hey, look at this thing that I did and have someone come by and go like, Oh, right. I don't like that. <laughs> right. Like, I didn't right. ask you. It's like, yeah, I know, but you put it up over on the wall. And yeah. so I wrote underneath it fart, <laughs> <laughs> but, but like TikTok is cool because it's just, you know, 40% of the people are posting things and everyone else is just hiding in the bushes watching. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> I you know, feel like you'd be good at TikTok though. I think not even motion graphics wise. Like if you're just doing TikToks in general, Casey, I feel like you would have some funny mm-hmm. things. I, 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 someone else recently told me that too. And I was like, do you think I could get anywhere if I just post like a super stretched out version of a dad joke? Like take a two liner dad <laughs> joke and turn it into a 10 second long bit? There is there yeah. is several people for that sure. I follow who do that type of stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, maybe I'll give it a try. Yeah. You should. I just, any, I don't any, know. Like I'm also I'm also self conscious about like I don't as much as I enjoy putting myself out there and like being the center of attention. I also don't love being the center of. 
I, I guess the center of criticism as well. You know, right. I don't know. Even if that criticism is once every three years, yes. <laughs> which yeah. which is why f- for me it's like okay if you're gonna get one person criticizing you every three years I don't think it's a good reason not to do something right I think I think you'll have a good TikTok Matt all right I think you'll have some fun things to to show I'm all, and then I'm, you'll get the audience so we can live stream together you know all right. be fun yeah, I'm all I'll for a good supportive criticism but if it's right. just like a random yeah, like yeah. like you're bad do better yeah <laughs> it's yeah. like oh well <clears throat> it, it's when people who don't watch the show comment. And it's yeah. like you obviously don't know me. All right, let's let's move on to Camp <laughs> MoGraph a little bit. Sure. Let's let's go to uh, first of all. Any updates we need to know about? No updates yet. Uh, we're still working uh, on uh, finalizing all the workshop instructors. We had a couple meetings last week, which is very exciting. Um, as well as the fireside chat people, we're super excited to announce everyone that we've got on board so far. Um, but it's going to be not today, but not today. No, oh, okay. <laughs> um, it'll probably be in a couple weeks. You know, we've okay. been kind of planning on that as well as, you know, we'll be showing off pictures of the, you know, the different cabins and stuff. You'll really want to, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. stay tuned for that. But yeah, that's about it. There's not really anything Camp MoGraph related other than just to say a big shout out to all of our sponsors you know mm-hmm. uh, biggest of course being otoy uh otoy is basically you know paying to put this whole thing on they are our global sponsor so otoy is presenting camp mograph and we're very excited about that we love otoy for that and then um two of our our two other village sponsors um maxon and video Copilot. um huge shout out to them so <clears throat> can we let them know that one of the fireside speakers is Adam Duritz from Counting Crows? <laughs> Wait, is it? What? Yeah, is remember? It? I thought, I thought <laughs> we were getting Adam Duritz from the Counting Crows. He was going to come and do a rendition of A Long December. <laughs> you know, oh, I, I actually an like... extra long version. Um, I, I hope I'm not giving anything away if we ever try... And, we, we actually tried... Like, I would love to get, like, you know, a director or something, you know. So, like, we're like, oh, let's let's try and get, like joseph gordon levitt or something you know because he's kind of in the space and so i contacted his yeah i contacted his people and they're like oh he would love to speak for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and i was like okay well we don't have that much money to spend sorry yeah that's not actually that bad what well, he, yeah. would he would he be around the whole time? I don't know. That's I the have question. no idea. Or, or, would he just, like, fly in. or would he just like fly in on a drone, get dropped, <laughs> right. and then yeah. like grappling hook away? <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean that would probably be the case. I, I would love my ultimate get for Camp Mograph would be um Oh shoot, what's his name? Uh Gareth Edwards. Nolan. No, Gareth Edwards. He would be oh, my ultimate yeah. get. I would love to get mm. Gareth Edwards. You know, I, I'm sure it will never happen. But like he, he to me, he was one of the biggest influences to me in my career. Uh, um, I saw him speak at the Adobe booth like years and years and years ago, you know, right after Monsters came out and uh, he was breaking down his whole process. And it's like, it was, it was amazing, you know. Have you Joseph like, Gordon-Levitt. It would he it, like it, or whoever comes would need to stay for the whole weekend right. and right. have the experience. Like it, I mean, I don't know if they don't necessarily think they'll do that have no, to. If, if, if like Mike has someone. to do it, like, right. like no, he, Mike, it has to be. Yeah. It has to be yeah. the same yeah. treatment. Like yeah. uh, Ash Thorpe has to pick JGL up and put him right. in a wheelbarrow <laughs> and then run him as fast as he can down the yeah. middle of the uh, of, of the runway. <laughs> it's part of the experience. Like they, they have to come and experience the camp, even right. if they're getting paid. I feel like that's like a requirement. Yeah, like just yeah, they oh gotta no, help me move hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, you have to hang out and get drunk with us. Oh right. no. Like, see, what? the thing is, like, I feel like I feel like yeah. if some of these some of these people, like, there, I feel like there are certain like directors or actors or whatever who, like, if they knew. I don't know if they knew the spirit of camp, they'd be like, oh, exactly. yeah, I will totally do that. You know, yeah. like especially uh, JGL. Yeah. You know, I, he should be into it. I don't know. It's so get in that helicopter and be like JGL away. And he like leaves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he's got to come. <clears throat> so if anybody knows him, if anyone knows him. Yeah. We're looking for yeah, him. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Say, hey, we would really love to circumvent your <laughs> talent agency. And yeah. just. He can do it. Uh, yeah. We loved you, you know. in Third Rock from the Sun, and we followed yeah. you to Brick. Yep. Angels yeah, in the so. outfield all the way. Oh, 
Oh gosh. Yeah. He probably he probably doesn't want us doing that, but <laughs> yeah. That's one of the stipulations in his contract is that no one does the angels in the outfield like flapping. Yeah. Such a weak uh, hype too. Right. Like Mighty Ducks right. had quack, quack, right. quack, and right. angels had silent feathers. <laughs> Not even a chant to go uh, with it, just a hand gesture. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. So so since you're head of staff at camp, like is there anything that you need to to, to you know, is this like public service announcement mm-hmm. for the staff? Which we haven't even solidified all the staff yet. We've got you know, most so of them. We've got most of them. We have a lot of them. Yeah. 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 I think but the, like, you know, public service announcement to your staff. To the, uh, to the staff and the <laughs> campers, I would say, um, you know, that no one hired a cleaning staff. <laughs> so right. everyone is the cleaning staff. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's like, that's everything from like the, the cigarette butt that you think you put out correctly and tucked right. into the dirt. That's not the appropriate place for it. And right. the, uh, you know, the, the cup of water that you, you know, you almost <laughs> got to the dish tray. Uh, the empty Corona beer bottles that Mike just left all over the camp that he's the only one drinking Corona. So I knew it was right. him every time. Yeah. I w- <laughs> okay. Yeah, the- so. TikToks. We'll we'll on the Camp MoGraph TikTok account, which we already have. We'll do some TikToks with Casey. That's a good idea. And he's telling people how what they have to do at camp. You know, yeah, yeah I like clean that. up after yourself. You there know, we what go. You do when you get to your cabin. You know, yeah, like a whole well, manual, a camp handbook. That'll be great because we come in a day early usually, so yeah. we can do all kinds of stuff. Like here's some stuff you might want to do right when you get to camp. Yeah, and then I can like open a door and then you know shoo away the the inevitable army of spiders that will have taken over right. one of the, you know every bunk at that point. Well, because you have the mental like telekinetic right uh, right. connection you, to the spider lord. You speak so you to the like, spider lord. So off with you. I don't know if I speak to him or her or if it is like a magnetism thing. And right. when I'm in mm. the presence of many other souls, the spiders are drawn to me as sort of like a beacon of like, oh, there's a lot of people around. Come feast. Right. The spider right, lord right. speaks through you. Yeah, we are his eyes. We are. We are. We are, we are his eyes. But he's yeah. always watching. Right. Yeah. And, sure. and if you don't know what Spider Lord is, like <laughs> you got to come to camp. Yeah, you got to come to camp. Yeah. So, we'll evolve the lore even more, dude. I love yeah. that idea. Like camp handbook, camp handbook Ooh. tip number one. Tip camp handbook tip number two, <laughs> and it's just like TikToks. <laughs> You know, it's the modern <laughs> camp. camp, camp here's camp a toilet, handbook. and here's how you flush it. It's this little arm right here. Right, you push it down. The water takes everything with it. Yeah, can camp. you show a full toilet? <laughs> this is this a good toilet? <laughs> no. It's awful. Is this how you leave it at camp? <laughs> no. Uh, I know TikTok doesn't have odors, but conduct. we're walking into a ripe, a ripe outhouse right. right now. Here's how you can stop this from happening in the future. <laughs> yes. Not a port. Oh potty. man. Oh man. I I, I just oh. Dave, I just had the, the flashback to the story that Brodor told us during our meeting a few weeks ago. Oh yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, gosh. I can't tell that story, that but man, that was a good <laughs> Oh wow. Oh man. someday, someday we'll someday. tell the, we'll tell that one at camp. Yeah, that one. There, was was that. it we'll, did it involve the long running joke of don't forget, download the video before you go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Because we we had no Wi Fi, right? Right, We we had no Wi Fi at uh, at the last camp, Mograf. Yeah, we had Wi Fi. We had better Wi Fi at the last camp than we did the previous camp. I had cell phone reception in Vermont. Did you? Yeah. Wow. Like so, I could I could get contact, but when I went back to my bunk at this last camp, Mograf, dead. Like there was, yeah. like, if, I, if any emergency occurred, like it was nothing. It was no one was going to ever well, be able to tell me. You were also you were in the tree houses, right? The tree no, houses. I was in. I was in the the Shire. Oh, okay. Weird. Yeah, that's why the Wi Fi didn't. No, there was a heavy was round a, door. Or, yeah, I don't know. There was a yeah. Wi Fi router inside Mike's, you know, cabin. Could have just been your aura, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. But, but, no, because in my in, in the, I got into this industry famously as an IT person. Oh, so I'm funny. I'm the oh, yeah. I'm the person when someone says like yeah my computer's not working and I walk over and like touch it it's working and they're right. like I swear it wasn't right. doing it again a minute ago yeah. the touch of the spider lord yeah. hey this is Dave I just wanted to stop for a moment and thank our sponsor Otoy the creators of Render Network and of course Octane but I don't have to tell you that you know who they are you see the results of their render engine all over the interwebs and we're very grateful that they're supporting what we're doing at MoGraph.com from this podcast. 
to MoGraph TV, to events like local meetups and Camp MoGraph and all our community building efforts. We can't wait to show you what's in store, all thanks to their support. Go check them out at otoy.com. Now back to the madness. We are. Um, um, <laughs> um, no, I, I know there's the, the good thing about this camp versus uh, like, say, the last one, as much as I love the last one, like having walking down to that whole separate area really like made it feel, you know, secluded and stuff. And I love mm-hmm. that. But this next one, the the whole like little auditorium area where we're going to do the fireside chats is connected to the cafeteria, which is great. You know, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's no having location so, tip number one. Right. There's an no, auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> no having. Yeah. I mean, people know where it's at. It's Camp Silver. Oh, Beach. right. I mean, it's already. Uh, sorry. I yeah, yeah, yeah. It's So if posted. anyone wants to look it up, I mean, you could see the pictures and stuff. You know. Yeah, you but I love that idea like. though, man, of the TikToks. I'm still thinking about it. Like, if you get there early with us and you can just do some clips and we'll post them for you. All you got to do is like yeah. go to the cafeteria and be like. All right, campers, this is the cafeteria. Here's where you get your, you know, don't you you see the trash on the floor here? This is the garbage can, you know, like stuff like that. (laughs) I'll I'll do the popular TikTok thing where people throw things on a counter. I don't know that one. My wife shows me all these cooking um, TikToks and it'll just be like, thump, thump. Oh, yeah. Like it'll be all the ingredients that they're going to use just like smacked on a counter. Or it'll be like all the things that you need for camp, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Smack it. Just don't go by what I pack. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's like, why did you bring a hand powered chainsaw blade <laughs> right? and a yeah. snake bite kit? And like, how did you, you get never that know. past TSA? <laughs> I always check my bag, but I bring like every piece of a, a camp accoutrement that mm-hmm. I could. I bring like water purification tablets and like mm-hmm. a little hand fishing kit. Mm-hmm. And you never know. World War Three could break out right at camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, why did you bring an auger? <laughs> what iodine iodine pill, pills iodine pills. one of the uh, one of the people who I, who I work with now he he he, mm. uh, he loves to mention he was like yeah you'd walk around like as soon as it's cooled off with that puffy vest with the walkie talkie strapped to your chest mm-hmm. and like a belt full of tools like you were in like full camp police rp it was great that's right it's great yeah hey uh we are a little short on time yeah it is a short show got 45 <laughs> minutes left and and before we get into uh, into it, because we 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 got to catch up on what Casey has been doing, yeah, because it's a lot different than last time we talked. Real quick though, I want to hit one point, and mm-hmm. I don't know the answer to this. I'm waiting to find out. I'm hoping that I get a word back. <coughs> um, some people I've noticed online are asking about X particles and the fact that the license server is not working in Russia. Oh yeah, have you have you heard about this yet? I'm I'm trying to like they haven't posted anything on their Twitter. About why, I mean, but I, I, I am just making the assumption here that it's sanctions related. People are pissed off that people in, like, artists in Russia aren't able to use X particles. And I understand why that would be, you know what I'm saying? I, I, underst- I understand why that would be, why that sucks. Like, it's, it's not the artist's fault, right? Mm-hmm. But I believe that from what I can see, it, it's sanctions related because don't they, like, cut off the internet? Yeah, uh, when they're because where is Insidium well, no, based out of? So like it's it, yeah, so it's uh, uh, the UK government's decision since you Insidium is UK based, you know, right? Yeah. So that means you can't send web traffic <clears throat> to them, which means you can't open your license server. Like, and and that's the problem. It's like it's not like they're doing this on purpose. Like, yeah. you have to abide by the laws of your your country. You know, like there's nothing probably they can do, and this is speculation. Yeah, but I this I may not even be the case. It's speculation, but I would say don't get super mad at Insidium right away. Maybe find out if that's the case because it seems like that that's the case. Yeah, you know, like and, and that's the point of sanctions. It's it's to make the citizens upset that something is going on so that they you know that they tell their government, hey, why are you doing this? Yeah, but um. That's I, I think we should wait and find out the reason why from them before we all like jump to conclu- conclusions and say rabble 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 right you're screwing artists because right. I have a sneaking suspicion that it is out of their hands right or they're like so. full tin foil hat people out there that think that Insidium somehow managed to like go through IP filtering and block blacklist all the people that were using. X particles yeah. in Russia? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't know. I that's don't crazy. Know. I mean, that, that's <laughs> they're well, like they if, can't if, act, if anyone had know. ever met any of the people that worked there, they would know that they'd be like, "Oh no, 
That sucks for everyone involved. They wouldn't right. go like, let's make a political yeah. stance and take X particles right. away from the country. Right. Right. I think it is. it has... Hundred percent to do with sanctions, but we'll, we'll you know, find out. I, Putin, I reached Putin out. Putin doing all those uh, 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 VDB renders and stuff. Yeah. You know. Did you see the picture yeah. of his desk? He has a he has a Cintiq. Oh, does he? Yeah. There's, a, there's just been this odd picture <laughs> of his desk that was going around. He's got this massive desk with like these old phones all around it, and then next to the his monitor, like almost like eight feet away, he couldn't reach it. Is a Cintiq. Interesting. Huh. I'm looking at it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But he, you know, he, it's not even his desk, right? It's somebody else's desk. Hi, my name is Sashia Dumont. I'm a writer, actor, and filmmaker. Hi, my name is Paul Robinson. I'm a director, DP, and filmmaker. We are the creators and hosts of the Go Gorilla Filmcast, an online source for all things indie film. We are a husband and wife film team and co-owners of Send Three Productions, and we started this podcast for filmmakers like ourselves who were producing on micro budgets with skeleton crews. Go Gorilla is a weekly podcast that features various talents in TV, film, and web series productions. We've interviewed filmmaker powerhouses like Kestrin Pantera, Richard Raymond, Alex Ferrari, Cassandra Ebner, and Ryan Connolly. Amazing actors like Hannah Ward, Lou Taylor Pucci, Chris Wataski, and Eileen Gruba. Groundbreaking cinematographers like Jody Lee Lipes and Jessica Lee Gagne, and many more. We also offer weekly reviews of our favorite films and shows, which vary from low-budget first-time filmmakers to A-listers and everyone in between. Go Gorilla is proud to announce that we have officially joined the MoGraph Podcast Network. So if you love filmmaking as much as we do, tune in every Sunday for a new episode of the Go Gorilla Filmcast. Your, your source, source for, for all things indie film. film. Now available on the MoGraph Podcast Network. We, we should get to you because we've got uh, 40 minutes left. So yes. uh, what we're going to do, because your uh, <coughs> your whole profession basically at this point is centered around NFTs, is we should go to the drop. What do let's, you think? Sure, let's go to the drop. The drop. Drop, drop. Is this the fucking mic? Drop. This is exactly what I should be doing. <laughs> What's up and welcome right. to this week's episode of The Drop. You're a weekly source for all things NFT and crypto art. Uh, as well as upcoming drops by notable artists in the MoGraph space. I remembered it all. <laughs> I didn't have to look. <laughs> <laughs> it was slowly. Uh, I'm Matt Milstead. As always, uh, joining me is Dave Koss. And joining us this, this week is uh, Casey Hupke. Hello. Um, yes. So, well, show us what you got real quick, Matt, and then we'll talk to uh, Casey. A bunch of stuff stuff um first up let's go nifty gateway they didn't update their stuff because they suck um uh and i'm probably i i at this point i'm like if nifty gateway wants to reach out to me and be like hey okay let's give you an advance look at all this other stuff like it's it's annoying to me that whatever this is my weekly rant about nifty gateway i'm I'm, i may start just (laughs) dropping nifty gateway entirely so uh they're not gonna feed you you'll get stuck in the nifty gateway you can't take it out of nifty gateway yeah that's yeah. True. See, that's the thing. Uh, 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 Billy, he says, better mention Ryan Talbot's Nifty Drop tomorrow. It's not listed on their site. But it's not it's listed. It's literally tomorrow. The, right. Like, like what is the, the thing is, with them? Like, it, it's like, okay, if, 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 you know, collectors and stuff like us, we want to buy this artwork, it's like we either have to follow the artist ex- extensively you know, we can't just go to Nifty or get the email. It's 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 frustrating. I want to know okay, a week ahead here, of time. Here, yeah. Here's the thing. I'm gonna bring up. I'm gonna bring up their site right now. Yeah. Okay. Now, who's on? So so Ryan's See, thing is tomorrow. And that's completely right? different than what I saw earlier when I checked. You know. Oh, this. Go to okay. curated drops real quick. Go to up curated drops. Yeah. Okay. And they probably just updated it. And now, see, look, February twenty eighth, John Norlander and Sean Williams. Yeah, you like, know? why is this the why, start of yeah, the week? Yeah, like, why do Monday, we need we to see the other week. five days? There, it, it should be you see the next five days ahead of time, right? You know, now, now there was I did notice one button that says view all upcoming. No, see that goes to the same thing. Yeah, view all upcoming. So it's tomorrow, right? But it's not listed. Whoever's doing the marketing for Nifty Gateways sucks. <laughs> uh, and, and they were doing it the correct way when they started. Like, you could see everything coming. You could plan ahead. Right. We say it every week, but, like, our friends have drops on Nifty, and we don't know about them. Yeah. 
So like, tomorrow, Ryan Talbot is doing a drop <laughs> on Nifty Gateway. Right. I don't have. I any should of the look previews. up his. Yeah, I, I'll look. See, up and his I have thing. to look up people's twitters and stuff like that. <clears throat> so, is it one of those really cool crab robot things? I think it is. Yeah. Oh, there's an yeah, adorable. Yeah. Oh yeah, Lily. The one, Lily. This is it right here. This is a great one too. Oh, with the yeah. ice oh. the yeah, yeah. animation is so great. Very, uh, very Bambi esque. You know. Me, oh right, I didn't even think about Bambi. that. You know, yeah, Bambi it's such a good, nice. uh, so smooth. Yeah, that is very Bambi. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, see, that's great. Why is this not listed? Okay. Right. I guess. Yeah. Whatever. <clears throat> uh, let's go to the yeah. other stuff so we can get to Casey here. Yeah. Uh, um. Uh. John Norlander is doing a drop today, so today is the only dr- one that we've got. And I love mm-hmm. John Norlander stuff. I I think John Norlander is amazing. I would love to have him on the show sometime i followed him i, fo- I actually uh, uh learned about him from tiktok you know because he's got a bunch of tiktoks mm-hmm. and stuff and he does the really weird stuff where you know stuff bulges out of like a soft body head or something super cool stuff <clears throat> anyway uh yeah so that is today also uh sean williams is doing a drop um i don't he he didn't post anything on Twitter, but I wanted to show off his work because it, it's pretty cool. It's a uh, very uh, uh, pop uh, culture inspired and stuff like that. I really like it. I think it's. I wonder if it's done in Procreate. I don't know. It might be. Looks kind of like it. <clears throat> yeah, that's it as far as Nifty Gateway. You know, hey marketing, get a hold of me because I'm just gonna start stopping. <laughs> nifty gateway drops <laughs> start stopping <clears throat> yeah uh next up is maker's place see maker's place is very reliable yeah it's like three days okay give me at least three days and like i almost you know you're able to show them off every week um so this first one is francis berthode uh times bulgari and times bonds, uh, <laughs> Cezani. Times. it's the hype nft <laughs> <laughs> That's the, ones on, the ones on maker's place uh, <laughs> um are very illustrative you know uh this one i believe this one is like a um uh inspired by like a lot of fashion designers and stuff like that and actually come with physical ones as well which Ew. is interesting so yeah <clears throat> that's uh that's today um and then on the first uh frederico somali um is doing Ooh, a is drop called reels yeah it looks like uh it looks like um uh 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 what is it adam arrays you know it looks like adam mm-hmm. arrays but it almost looks like if you look at the movement you know it looks like they took the it's been what, puppeted yeah puppet like the puppet yeah. tool how it makes it's that mesh fun. automatically or whatever yeah. it's almost like they turned that mesh into something but yeah, yeah. uh uh yeah uh, and then um, the second Gregory Stiff or Sif, sorry, uh, is doing one called Love Language, and uh, yeah, communication through color, oh, paint, shape, and symbol here in Love Language. Yeah. Anyway, cool stuff. Very illustrative this week, except for uh, John Norlanders. Um, wanted to give a shout out to Travis Ragsdale. Um, yeah. I, I wish I had followed this a little bit more closely. Um, <clears throat> but yeah yeah we um, mentioned it for a second we did but. so uh if you go to alphabotsociety.com uh okay that's the crypto.com this is uh, crypto.com yeah crypto.com yeah, so but. uh travis just dropped his alphabots which i think are mega super cool i really like them Ooh, those are um, fun. yeah so he's right? loaded now right so he's loaded he's <laughs> another one of our friends who have made millions um, all right sweet hey travis you want to sponsor some meet- some meetups right or, uh... <laughs> so but yeah it's uh it's another ten thousand collection and stuff like that yeah you know you can get them i think the floor price right now is like 300 bucks it's pretty cool i really like them i like them a lot i think they're very cool and they're different enough you know it's like he must have learned from mechaverse you know to at least put a background right. in, not the same they background. are very different right I, I do think that it i mean you could tell a lot of time right went into this right yeah you know you see similar traits and stuff like that but it's cool i like them i like them a lot and see what's great about this is you can bet on it it's not a rug pull right because because we know him right and and if it is a rug we know where he lives we'll go beat him up yeah exactly (laughs) be like it's my money bro where's my money yeah (laughs) <laughs> um, yeah, so shout out to Travis Regsdale. Congrats on uh, the Alphabots drop. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, uh, oh, and Winbush. Also, yeah, congrats to Winbush. Uh, yes. He had a drop with uh, Hakato uh, last week. Um, and this is a different one that Dave is showing, but uh, uh, oh, he sold yeah. the the piece. Uh, it was like for like forty six hundred bucks, so that's pretty awesome. Way to go! But he's, he's got this. He's involved in this one here now too. First dibs NFT, right? Man, it's, it's so many, so many different places. Yeah, man, he's just got so much uh, so NFT much. stuff going on right now. A lot of collaborations yeah, totally. that he's doing right now. That's that's yeah. really cool. So we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well, so you can check that out. Totally. So let's uh, let's talk to you, Casey, because uh, yes. uh, you are big into the <laughs> NFT space, but not if that makes just sense. Ex- How about we okay. just ask you to explain what yeah. you've been up to? No, no, I no. I, 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 need to, I want two more guesses about All my right. uh, knowledge and experience <laughs> and positioning in the NFT marketplace. Yeah. Uh, so th- what Dave, you do? Go ahead. You go ahead. One <laughs> is you're the you're the marketing guy for Nifty now. Right. Nope. Right. No. Not affiliated <laughs> anyway. <That's- laughs> We just found out. We've been bad mouthing you the whole time. Right, nope. <laughs> um, no. So, um, we all remember the NFT winter of 2019 yes. or whatever. Like we just went. Um, like I've, I've been Last following year. crypto since like 2017. Like, mm-hmm. if anyone remembers, like back our early Slack days in 2017, I was like, "Hey, I think this ETH thing is going to be pretty big. We should. You guys should take a look right. at it." And mm-hmm. a bunch of people um, refer to me as uh, their, their their crypto Santa because right. I convinced them to buy in around like seventy to two hundred dollars. Nice. And, and the MoCoin uh, channel on the Slack. Back yeah, in the MoCoin day. MoCoin became a thing because of yeah. just like all. The, yeah, it was just so much stuff was going on, and I was just very. Uh, I was more interested in like the underlying technology mm-hmm. and like trying to learn more about that and. Um, and the you know the whole Web three thing approaching and what that meant and like how is that going to be like the new internet because I miss the old era of um, of the web where mm-hmm. like it was you know I'd go on to like my GeoCities builder and just post mm-hmm. like a thing like a like a thing with gifts and have some like just nothingness on a page that no one can under really interact with. Yeah, all under with construction. No one can lights. do anything. Yeah. Just Casey's cool site dot geocities dot com. And slash that was like one, two, three, four slash you know, Silicon Valley dot slash geocities. Yeah. And then com. and then the web became this the place that it is now where everyone comments on any everything and everyone interacts with right. everything in an interesting way. So and everybody hates each other, yeah. Yep. Right. So, and it's all, you know, it's supported by um you know the first thing the first thing you get when you get to a web page is like would you like to buy some cookies i have a hundred cookies for you you can choose how many cookies you would like also mm-hmm. uh please don't reject them you're legal uh you, you can reject them if you want but it affects us and then the uh the oh, other and thing don't forget the the like passive aggressive like uh no button yeah. It doesn't just say yes or no. It says, uh, no, I would not like to receive awesome special offers. Thank you very much. Or you halfway yeah, scroll very- in and it's like, uh, a little quick sec, quick sec, sir. Um, you might turn off that ad blocker. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, no, I don't. So so Web3 sites start popping up and they're they're run by your chain. And they're like this. this it's the 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 future of the the, the interesting Internet starts starts popping up and. 2019 2018 and you know that started to pique my interest and then our friends start making millions of dollars with jpegs and the whole time i'm still just like working you know freelance and just doing my thing i'm not really concerned with what's going on and i'm not really sure what to do with it but i'm watching the technology i'm watching what the artists that i know are doing and just sort of trying to figure out where how I want to get in into the space. Like I talk about it to a lot of people, and I follow it, and I collect NFTs and all that. But um, I didn't really want to begin the what seemed like an arduous career reset and start over as like just an artist and mm-hmm. like make NFTs and like mm-hmm. focus on doing some ridiculously two month long still life project that you know. Mm-hmm may or may not sell for how much right. I need to survive for two months. Right. Um, right. And then I, then I also didn't want to double dip and like do my general like creative director freelance gig where I was managing like six or seven people and generally just kind of creatively drained at the end of the day 
to then like hop back on the box and like start making stuff. And I just, there was no real like place for me in it. So I was just like, Oh, I'm a, I'm a fan who speculates and, and invests and, and, uh, and flips PFPs every once mm-hmm. in a while when the mint shoots way up and I can just catch a get like a nice six ETH profit or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, then comes in, um, uh, my best friend, uh, Brian, he, he hit me up and said, Hey, I'm going to, uh, take a job at this uh, this NFT company called Recur, and I was like, "Oh, cool! Uh, let me know how the interview process goes, and you know, let's let's talk." Um, so he he interviews with them, and they start growing, and this is you know maybe June of last year, so you know not super long ago. Like the company just turned one in mm-hmm. uh, on two twenty two twenty two. Nice. Um, oh, okay, and so. So anyway, I I meet um I he t- he I talked to him. He 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 says he really likes it. He really enjoyed the interview process. I throw in an application. He hits up the 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 people gets a referral in. Um they'd already seen my application. So a couple days later, they reach out and um you know, I my, my I I had been approached by a couple other NFT companies like Mm -hmm. up to this point. And I was starting to kind of like nervous about the, the, the companies that were reaching out. Cause they they were just like, we just got, we just got a million dollars to work with such and such artist on like a Mm -hmm. a one-off limited drop. And like, we want you to be our executive creative director. And like, what, after we get this, like we'll do, you know, profit sharing. And I was like, you got a $1 million seed round. That's so small for a tech that, company. Like, yeah, what's your? That is. What are you minting on? What are your things? Like, oh, we're not sure. We're, we're figuring that out right now. We're just looking for artists who can make cool work, and then we'll like do the blockchain stuff second. And I was like, that's not how this works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, and this company mm-hmm. was was they they were hiring creatives after they'd already like had their executive team in place, started talking with folks getting engineering in place, like talking about the platform, getting like the mission statement and the core values and stuff built up like you would normally build a company. Like, so it it felt very familiar to like other technology startups that I'd worked for. So I was like, Oh, this is awesome. And then, you know, just talking with the, the owners and the, uh, the co-founders and the, all the other executive members of the team, um, everyone had such a good ability to like communicate what they liked about the space and um, where they wanted to go and what their like ideal thing would be. Um, there's a really good culture in the company in the, that I saw even at like, as like employee 42, you know, mm-hmm. now, now we're like over a hundred or something. Um, and it was just, it was just very, very refreshing to like have a very traditional technology company infrastructure being built to support this very like nascent space. So mm-hmm. I was like, all right, let's do this. This is exactly how I want to get in on in NFTs, like I want to get my fingerprints all over working with these giant IPs, because mm-hmm. you know if if you have if you have any familiarity with the company, they're sort of been sleepy. But on March fourteenth, our collegiate sports um, section drops called NFTU. Um, mm-hmm. If you go to if you follow over Curve Forever on Twitter, you can see a whole bunch of the awesome marketing promos that the art team has been working on, and like some of like the mock packs and like the NFTs themselves, but it's recur forever on Twitter. March 14th is when that drops. And it, this is like, just like a green <laughs> of, of the creative stuff that's been going on. That's finally starting to be shown. And then, um, we, you know, last year we did this recur pass that people got really excited about. And on the site, you get, you know, there's some teasers of some of the IPs that were, you know, under our, under our eye, you know, the coming, coming when they come type things. But mm-hmm. they, uh, the, to work, like to, to take a, an approach to what we know that works in the NFT space and collectability, digital collectibles, and to be able to look at these types of IPs, um, is, is, it's something that's super exciting. It's, I, I, I'm, I'm more excited about this than like trying to create like, um, my own, like oh I made this thing it's digit crystals and mm-hmm. there's uh, there's a billion of them and right. like each one has a different thing and like trying to get people like to get excited about it but like if you look at like the recur pass site and see like Rugrats and you know 
mm-hmm. Star Trek and uh, the, like all the sports teams that all the colleges. It's like, oh no, like building collectible experiences, supporting these things that we already love. Like yeah. that's that's a dream. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You brought up a good point because I have seen so many different sites that have just said, "Oh, hey, we got some money, and we're we're going to work with all these artists now." And mm-hmm. like they post all the artists that they're going to work with, and they they put up like a, a homepage, like a, a placeholder homepage, you know, like the GeoCities homepage with the right. under construction. But then that's like kind of like the, all you get. Like, where's the infrastructure? Where is like all the background like like it's just a bunch of hype like i know people get excited about it i know people are like in it because they like the art and they want to work with the artists but like if you don't really have a platform what's the point right mm-hmm. like like it, it seems like who uh it, it seems like y'all are y'all had all of that infrastructure there you know uh, and it just seems so much more well structured than just rando, like you said, oh, well, we're going to do this 10,000 piece collection, you know? Yeah. And, and just like, it's less, it, all that stuff just seems like talk to me. And sometimes I, it's just like noise. Mm-hmm. Well, when you think about like some of the, the IP and stuff that we're like associating with, you have to have a very, comp- you have to have a very big support system to just to manage that kind of responsibility for one. Right. Um, like even like, um, like we've interviewed and hired a, a lot of motion designers over the past like six, seven months mm-hmm. that I've been there. And one of the things that I've always said, yeah, you've been like, stealing our whole Slack channel, <laughs> not stealing. They're still there. <laughs> um, but they, it, it's like uh, this company. Like if I, if you were to like, think about like the last motion design studio that you worked for, like in, 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 in COVID, it was probably just like a bunch of people in zoom meetings, quietly working together, and you know, trying mm-hmm. like you know, working on their section of the After Effects comp, mm-hmm. and right. you know, in in this space, it's more like, okay, let's put our team together and think about like the A to B to C to D story plan for these things and how this is going to do that, how this is going to do this, and like, there's a it's it's a it's a lot of approaching things from different angles, and I the reason why I think motion designers are so like are doing so well in this space from the art side. Is because they already are like, oh yeah, man. Let me grab some audio really quick and just put some sound effects in there. And like, mm-hmm. you know, tradition, like a lot of art s- skill sets are, or a lot of artists that are more traditional pipeline production oriented are like, I'm really good at this. Mm-hmm. I'm really good at this. Mm-hmm. I have interest in other things, but motion designers they usually have this like nice broad breadth of like, oh yeah, I've done a lot right. of video editing and like I love playing with cameras or, oh, I like building Raspberry Pis and doing mm-hmm. some Python scripting. Yeah. But I also do, you know, Redshift and Octane and Arnold and Cinema 4D and I've, of course, recently started using Houdini, which is what, what everyone says. Yeah. And even Ableton, you know, yeah. or, or something, you know, in the audio field. Yeah. Yeah. I, and like the comment Matt and I always make that so many motion designers are Failed musicians. Are, uh, musicians or mostly <laughs> failed, failed musicians. musicians. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am definitely a failed musician. Yeah, I so. had... God, there was... There was one company that offered me, like, a chief creative officer role. And they were like, they were like yeah, we, so we, we, we got this thing. We're going to be <laughs> doing um, NFTs that um, you can only get from going to concerts and... Mm. Um, they're not, they're not they they do not exist anymore. Okay. Um, I can't even remember See, what their name the was. Thing. Like all the ideas are there, but then it's the execution. Yeah, you gotta be able to execute, right? Got to. Yeah. Yeah, and they, again, they were just you know, and I know this is a large amount of money to a lot of people, but they were saying like, oh yeah, we an investor just gave us nine hundred thousand dollars to start doing the research, and I was like, you hire like seven people, and that is gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like you, you, it's yeah. it's immediately gone. Like that's the that's the overhead for uh, a right. staff of four for right. uh, for one year. Right, right, right. Everybody, I, I feel like everybody gets this money in those situations, and then like just wants to go all out and not think about like maybe using it a little more wisely. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, do you really have to hire that many people right <laughs> away? Maybe you right. can hire one person and a couple contractors, and maybe right. you can. I don't know. Like, like, uh, question. What, like, what is your infrastructure like? Are, 
are y'all building things from scratch? Are you using certain platforms? And as much as you can say, um, like, are you, is there a lot of proprietary stuff? Because in my experience, I feel like if you can find a platform or something that works for you that's already built, there's no point in reinventing the wheel, mm-hmm. right? So, like, how custom do y'all have to get to do some of these things? Uh, and I can't be too revealing of anything, but, like, you know... Um, like, platform-wise, my- you know, like... I mean, like, you know oh, I mean, saying? like, all every cinema artist uses GSG Plus. You know, mm-hmm. like, there's, there's, right. there's, like, there's, there's the creative things that like you have to do to iterate fast. You know, like, you, right. you you've got to have your, you've got to have access to your Turbo Squids. You got to have access to your GSG Pluses or your, you know, your your Redshift material libraries and, you know, all that stuff. Like, I mean, you you have to have that stuff. Like, I I I I, I like to go back and rebuild things where possible, but sometimes you just don't need to. Like, if you have something that works, you know, I, I like, as a Houdini, as someone who's a Houdini artist and who loves also hiring Houdini users, we're, we're always building assets. So, you mm-hmm. know, there's always, like, I have my own personal Houdini digital assets that are basically, like, um, you know, my, my first steps to going to, into anything. I guess my question is... Uh, like not not necessarily not necessarily from the artist's standpoint, right? But like uh, in in more of a general NFT sense, because I know a lot of it is proprietary. Like, are y'all building custom things when it comes to actual crypto, or or are you taking advantage of other platforms that are like made already? To say, oh yeah, I see. Know. To that, I am not informed enough to discuss. That's like, I am so <laughs> like, there's, there's so many, there's so many people that will, that, uh, that there's no way for me to not accidentally see the wrong thing there. I'm so, right. so heads down, straight focused on art mm-hmm. and the, all, all the stuff that we're doing, like there's some, there's some pretty uh, it, it, like, how, like awesome information available up on the site that goes into some of the detail on it. And there's, there's a lot more coming, but you know, we're, <clears throat> The biggest question you, I always get is like, "How are you guys blockchain agnostic?" And I'm like, "I can I can kind of answer that, but I'm going to trip over it." Oh, that's <laughs> an interesting question. So you're blockchain agnostic in in what way? In the type like in the type of currency these these are using, or the way they're minted? Like, what does that mean? Um, it's just one of the. It's like. Yeah, again, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to steer <laughs> away from this question just so I don't. Miss the, I need I need to check the the, the latest uh, white paper on it. But there's um, there's some good stuff on. Uh, let me find a, a link for you. There's a good one. Like like for example, like are these you know are these on OpenSea? Can you see them on OpenSea? I guess would be my first question. You know, are these is this something where you can? move these around do you have something proprietary like you currently it, it like going on the recur site it just looks like you guys have your own marketplace correct yeah yeah there's okay. there's a marketplace that we have okay and then it's uh, on the blockchain right yep a blockchain so what what blockchain is that on is i guess that's my that's my question i believe all the passes are on polygon because there, when when we did the recur okay. pass, there was the whole like they bought like a bunch of passes with the, with the with the launch of it and everything. Okay. okay. Well, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. All right. I got gotcha. you. So, um, so as far as the company is concerned, then you are doing deals with companies that own the IP to then create that stuff, right? So, um, like you've got up here, you know, Hello Kitty, Star Trek, The Godfather. So these companies come to you and say, hey we have all this IP and we would like to create this stuff. Yes. I'm not sure of which in, in which case who went where to whom, but Mm -hmm. um, you Mm -hmm. know, these are, these, these are, these are the announced ones that we're parting with to create, you know, one of a kind fan experiences for. So when they, excited about the teenage mutant Ninja Turtles one, I'm excited about all of these. Yeah. (laughs) Like everything, everything that we, everything that we've shown, I'm, I'm super hyped for. I'll bring it up here so you can see like, like, okay. So Ninja Turtles, for example, um, you know, whoever went to who to do, to do the deal, right. Um, y'all are creating the variations on this. So what, when you get that IP, do you sit down with them and kind of decide, Hey, what is the process going to be? Uh, are they relying on you to be the art director in that case? Or are they giving you the, basically the instructions? 
Um, without getting too behind the scenes, there it's it's like <laughs> it's 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 very similar to like any agreement that you would make to work on any sort of commercialized project or product. You know, it's it's not mm-hmm. like it's an NFT, but in in the sense, it's still it's still. Uh, a, a licensed good and product that has brand guidelines and mm-hmm. uh, narrative considerations and everything else to be put into it. Um, but in this case, it's an NFT collectible that you know you can collect and ha- and, and you know more. But like, is, but <laughs> as far as like the art direction, though, you're making you... you're making Casey very uncomfortable right now. I know. <laughs> no, uh, I just I get this. There, like, there's so, there's directing? so much to be to be like. There's so much that like. That, yeah. that, that can't be said that I can't, I, that I can't say and also just in general talking on a podcast about anything you, right. so what you're saying you don't, your you don't lawyer want, isn't next yeah. to you right now yeah, so no my lawyer is not here Sorry, what's that? Yeah. he's gonna get oh, sorry, on yeah, the yeah. after yeah. this yeah. is over I, and they're gonna be like uh, Casey one? we're gonna have to let you go <laughs> but you can say you can tell us if you art are you art directing these I'm or are they telling director. you what they want so, so you are coming up with concepts for these things, right? Yeah. You're coming up with ideas. You're not just go, they're not just saying, "Oh, we need Raphael on a green background." Right? No, 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 like no, you're, no. You're no I'm, I'm, yeah, no. I'm, 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 I'm doing some of the most rewarding creative work that I've done in my career in the last long time on some of these projects. I'm, I'm, all of the projects that I'm working on. There's some amazing work being done. Some um, and some pretty impressive challenges being met with, like a lot of big brain creativity from mm-hmm. all the artists involved. So, um, yeah, the, all, all the creative that we're doing is, is so fun. That's another one of the, like the just insanely rewarding pieces of the, the puzzle. Yeah. And I can, I, I can assume that like working, like, I mean, working with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Star, Star Trek, you know, yeah. that would be, yeah. that, that would be huge. I would love that. You know, do you have anything that's, um, a large collection, like the way that you see, you know, at least maybe not 10,000 pieces, but do you have any that are in a large collection that require, like, you have to be super strategic about how you go about, like, doing the design or programming or anything in order to do a large pack? Or are these things very custom? Like You will have to keep your eyes on the space. <laughs> that, I, 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 don't, I, I can't spoil anything with that, but yeah. um, be excited. <laughs> you, are, are you... I like are you doing programming stuff yourself like are are you doing uh you know are you are you finding ways to like do your workflow in order to create things faster like that you know it's like you can put the the artistic and creative part in but like as far as creating variations and things like are you having to kind of learn new technologies uh invent new things or are you able to just get a, get on and be artistic personally um yeah so it's it's a it's a mixture of like you know a lot a lot of the challenges that would present themselves in creating um <laughs> casey's brains are gonna co- like it's, it, no I'm, I'm trying to think of like a, a like a very like clean way to say it. it's like yeah. it's it's not like creating storyboards for a, like a 30 second or 60 second spot mm-hmm. um because when you're tr- when you tell a story over a 30 second 60 second spot you know that you have like a three act structure and, or a four act structure, depending. Um, and you kind of want to like get to the point and then have enough for the reveal to let the product idea land. When you're creating an actual product, like an action figure or um, a piece of technology mm-hmm. or a mouse, like, and especially that if that thing is going to have like a narrative background to it, there's all sorts of different things that go into making that object like important and and rich in story so when you think about making multiple things like the like, like any product like a living thing that's going to go on exchange hands get you know people's perspectives put on it and opinions said about it and it's going to live there as a a product forever like it is coming no matter how many of those you're making approaching that design is is a challenge. Um, mm-hmm. So it's even even making one uh, like like right. you know GI Joe is a difficult task. So um, it's it's much different different than uh, than at my previous life in commercial. Sure. Do you yeah, and you you probably learn a lot of technical things. I know like just with NFTs, I've learned a lot about technical like new technical things that I don't even understand. Trying to understand these concepts, like has has doing this helped you wrap your head around things that were previously just like crazy blockchain things that you had never even 
known about before. Like, are, are you very immersed in that on a day to day? Do you get to learn that new stuff or hear about it? Or you just, uh, are, I say just create, but like, are you able to focus on art like as, as a whole, and, yeah. you know, in general, like what's the ratio there? Um, so we're, we're, there's so much stuff going on. I, I mean, like I'm really, really kind of heads down specifically in creative, but the, the, you know, there's so many people here in this space. Like my, my I mean, most of my friends are super into like the crypto and blockchain world as well. Mm-hmm. I am too. Like it's, it's like, uh, I, I mean, I have to like also pay attention to that. Like, you know, right. The, I uh, pretty much my, my, my video game blogs switched to NFT and crypto blogs. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, the, like my, my, my secondary reading is all like, Oh, what's this company's, uh, uh, white paper. Like what's their future game plan. The biggest thing I've been intu- interested in lately is, um, like web three overlays for Minecraft clients. Like, did you see, uh, hero galaxies? Interesting. Um, it's like a, it's, you can basically play Minecraft with this over, like, it's basically like a, an, a an, an integration. Yeah. It's a mod for Minecraft that lets you use the NFTs. Hmm. Oh, so you can use like your metaverse characters on top of the Minecraft people? Yeah, there was um what was the Unknown Islands or there was something else that was that was supported with it, but it's just it, it's interesting. Like I'm 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 Oh I'm, boy. Oh, hold on. Man, sorry. I just played really loud noises on the stream. Y'all didn't hear it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, I have, uh, yeah, I have, oh, that's weird. I had Twitter muted and all of a sudden it wasn't muted. Sorry. Here, I'm bringing up this on the screen so you can see it. This is, uh, this is the heroes thing. Sorry. I didn't mean to step on you with that loud audio. Yeah, you can keep going. It's okay. Yeah, no, it's just super interesting. Like I, I, it, uh, I missed the mint. Um, like I went to go mint some, <laughs> And the the they they had whitelisted a couple thousand, and they had like three or four thousand left. And um, and I went, I hit mint, and then it was like gas is going to be eighty bucks, and I was like, oh wow, gas is cheap right now. And then it was like speed up, and I was like, okay, I'll speed up. Then it was, then in gas was twenty seven hundred dollars. Holy cow! <laughs> and then I reloaded, and the Gosh. mint was sold out. It was like thirty seconds, three thousand NFTs minted. Wow. Wow. And I was like, I'm not going to pay that gas. See, that's why I feel like uh, it's good to know this stuff ahead of time. Because if you got to get your wallet ready, mm-hmm. you know. Um, what do you think about since I since we can't talk too much about the actual inner workings of mm-hmm. uh, your job in that sense? Like, tell us what you think about the metaverse in general, like the future. Yeah, where do you think this we, is all going? <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is giving me 2014 NAB flashbacks all over again, where at the end of the, at the end of the NAB session, they were like, Hey, will you guys, um, where do you guys think the industry is going to be in five years? And then both me and Nick were like, I'm not answering that. Cause you're going to play this in five years and be like, <laughs> right. you were so wrong. <laughs> it's going to be the, the Bill Gates clip where he says, like no one needs more than a hundred. Yeah, a hundred KB of RAM or something like that. I don't know. That's, um, everybody right. likes to bring that up. So, I think that the the term, the word metaverse, and where the metaverse is going and what it is are things that are sort of being shaped by a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. Like it, um, I, I kind of always felt like we were already getting there. We were already there and already already like stepping our foot in it with like you know Instagram AR filters and like TikTok filters and uh, that kind of stuff. I right. felt like that was already getting there. I don't think digital. It, yeah, I don't. Th- I don't think it requires wearables. you to be represented by a verified NFT in multiple social networks and also have an AR headset. And mm-hmm. um, I think Fortnite is a metaverse, and I think that it's it's clear that it, it's a multi. You know, it's it's you go in as yourself and you do multiple type, you do different events and, you know, people spend time customizing and, you know, making themselves look the way they want to look there. Like in, in some senses, world of Warcraft has been kind of a metaverse for a long time. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know I've, I've lived lives in that game. I've, I've raided right. in multiple guilds, tra- traveled various servers, escaped unwanted friends. <laughs> Met Leroy Jenkins. 
Yeah. Um, but I, I, I like this. I, I like the idea that um, there's this. I mean, I, I, who couldn't? I mean, I, I know, I know who couldn't. But I, I'm ready for the a version of like a Star Trek Ready Player One, where mm-hmm. we solve our way into like digital overlays in real life and like gamified mm-hmm. living VR and IRL experiences and. You know, you can take all your digital assets with you through whatever app you want to go to and do that stuff. But one of the things, like, I, uh, people always, like, associate that with, like, a dystopian or a dark or, uh, like, an impoverished future where ever everyone spent their all their earnings and money to, like, go free-to-play games on a VR headset and, like, live in a, in a stack of RVs in the middle of a junkyard. Right. Um but I don't think it. I don't think it go- has to be that. Like Star Trek is a great example of like, man, everything's so great. Science is doing so good. What if we mm-hmm. just go explore the universe and offer help and ask mm-hmm. questions? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, cool. What should we take? I don't know, but for sure the holodeck. And then also, yeah. also that bar that you can get drunk in, and then you <laughs> right. walk out of it. Ten and you know we're drunk. <laughs> Ten forward. Oh yeah. Ten yeah. Forward. Is that hall. how it works? Is that how synth the hall works? You only feel it until you leave the ten forward. I like that concept. Yeah, I do too. I, that's yeah. I, that's what I that's what I researched was that synth the hall was oh. just something that was just like oh you're drunk and then you like you clip and then you're like oh no longer drunk I can now fly oh, the ship again. That. Yeah, it's I like wish you that walk were out the, the door and it scans you and it takes it out of your bloodstream. <laughs> Nano box. I wasn't aware It'd be of that. great if you could like stop it. You know, so that you could drive home and then start it back and then up. turn it back on. <laughs> yeah, once yeah. you get home, it's just like an equal. It's like a, just a little like thing in your brain that like right. just like stresses your equilibrium out and makes you feel intoxicated. <laughs> That's funny. All uh-huh. right, Matt, you wanna you wanna wrap up the drop because we have a short. Uh, this is a short yeah. show. If you're yeah, just doing um, in a slate. Uh, yeah, if you or anyone you know is doing a drop, feel free to email us, info at mograph.com. We'll show it on the show. The drop. Drop, drop, drop. Is this the fucking mic? Drop. This is exactly what I should be doing. Casey. Hey, we're back. Thanks for coming on and, uh, and, uh, in the most vague sense possible, letting us know what you've been up to. <laughs> I said that I'm working in the creative industry <laughs> in the NFT space. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah. honestly, if you guys want to you know, know a lot more, we've got... Um, uh, Recur has a huge Discord server um, with all kinds of like FAQs and information right. and, and community managers that love... Um, talking and hyping up the company and, and explaining all the great stuff that we're doing. Um, I'm just I'm just a humble creator director. <laughs> <clears throat> well, we're going to wrap up. Sorry we had to have such a short show. We are going to get you back on very mm-hmm. soon. Like, yes. not in a year. Like, before camp, uh, when, you know, we're getting closer, we have more stuff yep. to talk about about camp. We can go into some other things, maybe not... Uh, NFT related, we can go into some more of the you know health and wellness and mental health stuff that we love to talk to you about. You know, mm-hmm. um, just making sure everybody's doing well in these these weird times of pandemics and world wars and things. World so, wars. like, yeah, I think I think people need that. You know, mm-hmm. more than once a year. So um, we'll get you we'll get you uh, like scheduled for I don't know. Let's say like this summer before camp. We'll kind of have a, a good um, health and uh, mental wellness day, and we'll talk about camp and get everybody prepped to like go in the forest and take a break and mm-hmm. just clear their minds. Cause, that sounds uh, great. Everybody's going to need that. Yep. Um, I do want to remind everybody, if you're watching MoGraph TV, that uh, we now are also playing uh, between the keyframes. Yes. So uh, we are going to be playing... Uh, an, an episode right after this mm-hmm. on MoGraph TV. So if you're on MoGraph TV, just stay tuned and that'll be on. And if you're not watching MoGraph TV, if you're watching this show specifically on the, the live stream for this event, you should flip over to MoGraph TV after this and check out Between the Keyframes. Yeah, it's, Aaron it's Sarovsky and Austin Shaw. Super exciting yeah. stuff, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get out of here. You can rate us on iTunes, leave a review on your podcatcher of choice. That helps get our ratings up. You can also subscribe to our newsletter. We got one going out uh, this week, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's actually all ready to go. So 
Uh, t-shirts. You can say you've been there, done that, got the t-shirt with the MoGraph logo T, the Feel the Bab 2020 shirt, all the profits from that go to Doctors Without Borders, the MoGraph Blandishment shirt, the Render Things t-shirt, hoodie and long sleeve tee, and lastly, that Render is Fire shirt, which you're only allowed to wear, ironically, unless you're Shams. Unless you're Shams, yeah. Yes. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, MoGraph.com, TikTok. Check us out on all the things. Come join us live. And, Casey, now, if people want to find you, some of your, your, your websites and tags of things have changed. What is your contact info on that? Uh, still xkcx.com for web content. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Instagram's at Darth Casey. Honestly, I don't use Instagram very often, though. Mm-hmm. So it's would just would not even worth going there unless you want to occasionally like see me posting a picture of walking three dogs holding six bags of poop <laughs> um i'm seven that active on two twitter poops per dog so, dude yeah. one dog will go three or four times <laughs> all right there you go um, why don't you put the other bag inside the the new bag huh so oh, because you well, you've already tied up the bag. Like it's like oh. they don't go. At the, they don't all stop at a corner and go like, "All right, guys, three, right. two, one." But you pick dump. up one and, and then the leave it old the bag. You Recursive put the poop. old bag in there so that you only carry one bag. But see, yeah, what you just did—that tying—I'd have to untie it and put the bag in. No, no. Right. When you you don't yeah, tie it sense. before you pick up the poo. <laughs> oh, he ties it after. Anyway, <laughs> if. <laughs> So the your your tag on Twitter though xkcx underscore eth is yes. that a new account or did you change the name? That's I just changed the name and then okay. on t- on TikTok I'm xkcx dot eth. That's also my ens um, okay. wallet address. As most yeah, people are, you, everyone loves that stuff. So if you want to send KC free uh, free uh, NFTs, yeah, or or just fill my wallet too. with like a com- malware. Right. tokens yeah. that I have to go through yeah. and blacklist. Airdrops that nobody wants to look at because they're afraid of them. I do get airdrops yeah. sometimes, just a like random penguin ape <laughs> like mm-hmm. like just some mm-hmm. oh, this is a this is our new NFT project. It's an ape of some kind. Right. <laughs> How original. <sighs> no? Okay. Anyway, we're gonna get out of here. <laughs> and until next time, I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. I'm Casey. Have a good one. <laughs> Later yo. Pretty good, I guess. MoGraph.com, an online resource for motion graphic artists. Start your week with the MoGraph podcast. Industry news, interviews with your favorite artists, and terrible humor. Watch live shows and interviews from MoGraph events like NAB, SeaGraph, HalfRes, and local meetups. Our MoGraph talks feature live demos and motivation from artists all around the world. Sometimes you got to make stuff that you're not going to put on your reel, and I'm not here to judge. What if Rick and Morty show up for the countdown at midnight? That's where I peaked in life, in my career. we got to stop this thing, Rick! It's going to kill us all! Hear from the people that create your software, design your render engines, and artists that are changing the face of modern motion graphics. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame, frame what? MoGraph tutorials and online classes will teach you about Cinema 4D, After Effects, as well as other popular software and render engines. Throw in HDR Studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous! Branch into new software, learn time-saving tips, techniques, workflows, and lessons that'll keep you up to date in the world of motion design. Oh, brother, those are some of my favorite elves. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Join the conversation in our live sessions. Check out our plugins or join the hundreds of daily active users in our Slack channel for technical help, advice, contests, or just to joke around. Real nice banana. Ah, that's so funny. All right. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> Subscribe today and get the latest updates on our YouTube and other social media channels. Take all your dreams and just do it! We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe to MoGraph.com.